More than 200 more deaths in China. In Korea, though, no new cases for a second day in a row. President Moon Jae-in calls on South Korean companies to go ahead as planned with new investment to help the economy get through the coronavirus crisis. Tax benefits and other measures on the way for them, too. And one of the biggest events in the IT world, the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, is cancelled amid health concerns among the tens of thousands of people who are going to attend. It's 4 o'clock p.m. here in Seoul. Thanks for tuning in to Arirang News. I'm Devin Whiting. More cases of coronavirus have been reported on the cruise ship Diamond Princess. The Japan Japanese government says 44 new cases have been confirmed and thousands of people are stuck on the ship in Japan's Yokohama port. For more on that, we have on the phone our Yi Gyeong-un. Gyeong-un, what's, on, what's the latest? Hi, Devin. Just a couple of hours ago, the Japanese health ministry said 44 more people on the cruise ship tested positive for the coronavirus. 29 of them are Japanese, while 15 are from other countries. This brings the total number of infections on the cruise ship to 218. The ministry also said it will discharge elderly people or those with pre-existing conditions as early as Friday if they test negative for the coronavirus. But they will be sent to designated facilities for extended monitoring. As of now, all the confirmed patients have been sent to local hospitals, but more than 2,000 passengers and crew members are still quarantined on the ship, and they've been stuck there for nine days now. With other ships also not being accepted by any country, the World Health Organization has called on countries to practice freedom of poor entry, saying it will sign a joint communique with the International Maritime Organiza Organization on the matter. Well, now over in China, uh, Hubei province, the epicenter of the virus, has reported a sharp increase in its figures overnight. Tell us more about that. Yes, Devin, both the number of new infections and the death toll in Hubei province increased drastically on Wednesday. China state-run CCTV reported Thursday that the province reported more than 14,000 new cases and an additional 242 deaths. The number of cases has surged nearly tenfold from yesterday, reversing the declining trend from the past couple of days. The, official, uh, the officials explained on Thursday the spike um, is attributed to their new counting method. They decided to count clinically diagnosed cases as confirmed cases, along with the ones that have been confirmed in a lab. It means that they are counting anyone who is diagnosed to have symptoms of the coronavirus, like severe respiratory tract disease and lesions in their lungs. The rest of China, apart from Hubei province, had already been applying these guidelines. So far, China's National Health Commission is yet to release the figures for the whole of the country, but with around 44,000 total cases as of Tuesday, the total number of infected people in China is expected to be around uh, 60,000 mark. Well, that's all I have for now. Back to you, Devin. All right, Lee kyung -un, thank you for that. Now, South Korea has reported no new cases of the coronavirus for a second straight day. For now, the total number of confirmed cases stands at 28. And we have our Choi jung yoon on the line with the latest updates. jung yoon fill us in. Uh, sure, Devin. So at 2 p.m. today, the Korea Centers for Disease Control and Prevention confirmed that no additional cases had been reported as of Thursday, with the total number of cases staying at 28 for two straight days. Of them, seven have been discharged from hospital after a full recovery, and the remaining 21 are being quarantined and are known to be in a stable condition. Currently, some 670 people who've been showing symptoms are being tested, and more than 5,000 others who've been quarantined have been released after their test came back negative. Well, now, a plane brought back more than 100 people from Wuhan uh, just yesterday on the third chartered flight from the city. What about those people? Well, initially, authorities had uh, said that at least five people from the total 147 passengers showed symptoms of the coronavirus as they arrived on Wednesday. But just a couple of hours ago, the government reported that all passengers, including those five, have tested negative and are now at the Korea Defense Language Institute in Incheon City, Gyeonggi-do Province, where they'll be isolated for two weeks. The passengers will each be quarantined in separate rooms and will be provided with necessary daily supplies. Mental health consultants and translators have also been dispatched to help the passengers stay. Meanwhile, the government requested that people refrain from criticizing the patients with the virus. There has been some criticism online toward the third confirmed patient for spreading the virus to five more people. The government said it will strictly manage the patient's privacy and will take legal measures if necessary. That's all I have for now. Back to you, Devin. All right, Jung-yoon, thank you very much.
Now in other news, South Korea's Deputy National Security Advisor Kim Hyun-jong is in Moscow to meet with his Russian counterparts to discuss bilateral issues. Upon his arrival Wednesday, Kim said he's also going to discuss Russian President Vladimir Putin's upcoming visit to Seoul. Putin's expected to come to South Korea this year to mark the 30th anniversary of Seoul-Moscow diplomatic ties. The official refused to comment on whether they would discuss North Korea issues, but he did say he would not be meeting with any North Korean officials while there. Kim's Moscow trip comes just days after, days after his visit to Washington, so observers say this could breathe fresh life into the stalled denuclearization talks. And Russia's ambassador to North Korea, Alexander Matsigora, apparently thinks no one can be sure whether North Korea will or will not uh, test nuclear weapons in the near future. Russia's state-run news agency RIA reported Wednesday on how Matsigora understood what North Korean leader Kim Jong-un said in the ruling Workers' Party meeting in December. Kim had said North Korea no longer needs to do things for which it gets nothing in return. The Russian ambassador thinks Kim meant North Korea doesn't need to suspend nuclear tests as it promised the U.S. On the other hand, he also noted that the North Korean leader said the regime has done enough scientific tests, so it doesn't need more nuclear tests. South Korean President Moon Jae-in has called on local businesses to go ahead with aggressive investment as they'd planned to, to breathe life into the economy amid the coronavirus outbreak. Moon met with a group of local business leaders this morning whom he told that the government and business sector need to join hands to revive the economy and that the safety of the people and companies will be protected at all costs. Take a listen. Moon expressed regret over the negative impact of the virus on the economy, which he said was showing signs of recovery. But Moon expressed confidence that the outbreak will soon be contained, saying that preventative measures appear to have stabilized. Among the participants on Thursday were Samsung Electronics Vice Chairman Lee Jae-yong, SK Chairman Che Tae-won and LG Chairman Ku kwang mo Starting today, the government is going to provide over 211 million U.S. dollars to support small businesses affected by the coronavirus outbreak. The Ministry of SMEs and Startups says it'll give some $110 million to help SMEs in the tourism sector. The money will also go to manufacturers whose supplies have been disrupted. The other $100 million will support small business owners struggling with falling sales and disruptions to their trade with China. One of the world's biggest smartphone and telecommunications events, the Mobile World Congress, has been canceled because of the coronavirus. In Spain, it's where it's held. There's been only a few cases of the disease, but it would have brought huge numbers of people there from all over the world. Our Yoon Jung Min has this report. The Mobile World Congress Barcelona 2020 was called off amid fears over the coronavirus outbreak. The CEO of organizer GSMA said in a statement Wednesday that it was impossible to hold the event because of the global worries over the outbreak, travel concerns and other circumstances. The annual event draws more than 100,000 visitors to the Spanish city of Barcelona. It's the first time in its 33-year history that organizers have called off the event, which was supposed to be held from February 24th to 27th. The organizers were originally planning to go ahead with the event with tightened temperature screening and other countermeasures. The decision to cancel the event seems to have been affected by a number of exhibitors already having decided to pull out, including Facebook, Amazon and LG Electronics. South Korea's LG Electronics and several Chinese smartphone companies were planning to unveil their new products at the global event. The organizers added they would continue to be working in unison towards staging next year's event. Yoon Jung-min, Arirang News. Now, a lot of people in South Korea want to know exactly where the people infected with the coronavirus have been here locally, so they can avoid those places or just be extra careful. To help with that, some public-minded college students have put up a website. 
Kim Bo Kyung has the details. To people in South Korea, keeping track of where confirmed patients have been is important. Not only because they can check the locations they should avoid, but also because they can quickly report to health authorities if they are showing any symptoms. To ease people's anxieties, college students in South Korea came up with an idea to make a map showing the locations that confirmed patients have visited. Four students in their 20s learned programming together for a year, and after the coronavirus outbreak, they developed a website called Corona Nearby. Although lots of information on coronavirus was being provided, we didn't think it was in a nice format that people could look at. So we thought we could make a map-like version. If you visit the website, you first need to allow the computer or mobile device to know your location. Then, based on the information where you are or where you would like to go, you can find any nearby sites where confirmed patients have visited. You can also see the nearby hospitals in case you show any symptoms. Another website called Corona Map also shows the number of confirmed patients and a history of their whereabouts since contracting the virus. I wanted to correct false information on platforms such as social media or YouTube, so I made a map service based on the data from Korea Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Young inventors of both websites say that they will update the information until the coronavirus outbreak passes. They also added that they will continue to work for public good. We received lots of feedback from many people saying it was of great help. We felt pride in what we did, so if other issues come up in the future, we will try our best to do something for society. Inventors hope they can close the websites down so that people don't need to worry anymore. Kim bo Arirang News. Time now for an in-depth look at the market action this afternoon. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Dr. Kim Sewan, Professor of Economics at Ewha Women's University. Professor Kim, thanks for coming on today. Good afternoon, Devon. So stocks on Wall Street keep moving to new record highs, uh, surely in part of expectations uh, that the coronavirus outbreak will subside. The Dow Jones now just on the cusp of 30,000. What's the story in the global markets? Uh, it looks that global stock market is uh, shrugging off concerns from a uh, coronavirus outbreak. Uh, particularly, uh, U.S. stock is rapidly increasing from early February and as you said, Dow Jones Israel has reached at its highest level in history, around uh, 30,000 uh, point. And European markets uh, are also increasing uh, this week, including UK, France, and German markets. However, uh, Asian markets, uh, including uh, Japan and Shanghai markets, are still experiencing uh, ups and downs without a clear direction of the market. Yeah, that's clearly uh, showing there. And also, we saw the Kospi start out higher today, but then lose that momentum in the afternoon, leaving it down about a quarter percent. What happened today in Korean stocks? After uh, experiencing huge drops in, in the end of January uh, due to uh, coronavirus, uh, Korean market is maintaining uptrend uh, uh, this week. Uh, actually, and today's uh, cost be dropped uh, by 25 basis point. And in today's market, uh, the big buyer was foreign investors, but both of domestic uh, people, investors like institutional investors and individual investors, both sold the Korean stocks. But in cost stock market, uh, the market increased by uh, 13 basis point. So in opposite, in cost stock market, individual investors uh, bought uh, cost stocks. Well, now, over in the U.S., uh, President Trump continues to push Fed Chairman Powell to lower interest rates. Uh, what do you think is the likelihood of rates going down further? And if they do, how would that affect Korea? Uh, U.S. economists are saying that uh, Central Bank of U.S. or Federal Reserve is under the largest political pressure in history. Uh, from President of the United States. And the U.S. Fed key interest rate is set between 1.5% and 1.75%. Uh, 
And Chairman Powell says he finds no reason to change it as of now. But if economic impact of coronavirus on global economy and also U.S. economy becomes larger than expect, expected, there is a possibility that uh, U.S. Fed uh, is decreasing interest rate by a quarter percent. And if uh, U.S. Fed does so, uh, Bank of Korea will decrease in key interest rate uh, at the same time. Well, now, uh, there are also signs that the coronavirus outbreak might be reaching its peak, at least according to some sources. And uh, the floor leader of the ruling party in South Korea's National Assembly saying now is the time to take some steps to stimulate domestic demand. What do you make of that idea? And to boost demand, what kind of measures could they take? I actually pretty much agree with him on the timing of implementing stimulation, stimulation policy on domestic demand. The most affected industries from coronavirus outbreaks are tour, transportation, airline, hotel, distribution, and so on industries. And also, it should be noted that uh, uh, that the, there are lots of self-employers uh, in these industries, uh, and these uh, people are under in marginal situation as of now. So, Korean government can provide tax benefits and emergency loans and uh, direct subsidies to these industries and to these to these people. Right, well, uh, we also see expectations now that OPEC will cut its uh, output even further, which would s help sustain prices, uh, gold prices rising too. Can you explain a bit about uh, what's going on there and where you see those prices going? One of the largest factors on international oil prices uh, as we know, oil producers uh, supply. And OPEC member countries uh, have decided to decrease oil production. And the expectation is there will be further decrease uh, oil production in the, in the future. And that uh, increased the oil price in the global market. In yesterday's uh, oil market uh, of Western Texas, Western Texas and Brent oil markets, oil price increased over uh, 2% in a single day. And uh, regarding the price of the gold, uh, the driving force of the international gold market is uh, investors' demand for safe asset. And due to weakening coronavirus impact on, on global economy, gold price is steady after the peak of its price at the end of January. I think this that situation uh, goes on further. All right, Dr. Kim, we'll have to leave it there for today. Thanks so much for coming on, as always. Thank you very much. Now, after winning four Oscars, the movie Parasite has been dubbed a game changer for the world movie industry. Riding on a wave of last weekend's remarkable achievement, more people around the world have been going to see the movie in the theater. Kan Hyung-woo reports. Parasite made history at the 92nd Academy Awards on Sunday as the first non-English language film to take the top honor, Best Picture. Winning the most prestigious Oscar, Bong Joon-ho's black comedy has been credited with forever changing the landscape of the international film industry. Owner of Cohen Media Group, Charles Cohen, says Parasite is a game changer and it's a great vote of confidence for world cinema. His company owns movie theater chains throughout the UK and the US. In fact, Parasite earned more than 1.3 million US dollars in the UK in its first two days after its February 7th release, a British record for a non-English language movie. Pong's movie has also set new highs for a South Korean film's revenue in France, Mexico and Russia. According to international media analytics company Comscore, Parasite has topped the Spanish box office, a first for a South Korean film. Italian newspaper La Repubblica reports that Parasite has also claimed the number one spot on Italy's box office. Parasite fever remains in full swing in the United States as well. The film is sitting at the top of Amazon's best sellers list in the Blu-ray category. It's number two on the U.S. iTunes Store movie rentals chart. According to U.S. ticketing firm Fandango, Parasite received an Oscar online ticket bump of over 440%. Movie ticket revenue tracker Box Office Mojo says 
Bong's latest film is the fourth most reserved movie in the U.S. and Canada. Parasite's distributor in North America, Neon, plans to increase its showings of Parasite to some 2,000 cinema screens by the weekend. Kan Young-woo, Arirang News. Last month, a Samsung lab revealed its lineup of artificial humans. These are digital avatars that look like actual people. This has led to a debate over whether we should put a human face on artificial intelligence. Oh Soo-young explains. There was a mix of disgust and fascination when Samsung Star Lab revealed what it called an artificial human last month. Its lineup of new chatbot avatars look in every inch a living, breathing person that can show human emotions and intelligence. Star Labs has said they're nothing like smart voice assistants. They are actual beings in their own right, and their uncannily human features provide immersive support for customers. But these unorthodox personalities have also caused some unease and questions on whether they're necessary. Uh, a movie like uh, Beowulf or um, some other movie where they used humanoid, human-like characters, but uh, you could see that they were almost dead in their eyes, and it sort of gave a zombie feeling. And even though mathematically speaking, the two appearances are very close together, reality and the simulated appearance, uh, we are tuned to see very subtle changes. And so um, this falls into what's known as an uncanny valley. However, some scientists believe virtual agents who look like humans can help make services more interactive and engaging, especially in healthcare and counselling. Carnegie Mellon's Louis Philip Morenzi found them helpful in diagnosing mental conditions. People who believe that there is a human behind were a lot more aware of their behaviour. In fact, they showed less sign of sadness. Their emotions were different. And so that's an example when uh, using an automatic system, a virtual human, may be beneficial, where the person may be more willing to open up uh, to this uh, virtual interviewer. But in any case, experts warn caution is needed before further expanding the use of virtual beings. The thing to bear in mind is what the psychology behind that could be, right? And so really understanding the ethical nature of building something like that, the psychological effect, and all of this uh, are done in sort of different fields. Bringing together people from these areas together is the way to go forward in this kind of applications. Artificial humans are not dead or alive, and it's hard to draw the line on how real they need to be in our lives and how we should interact with them. Oh Soo-young, Arirang News, Pittsburgh. South Korea's market last year for digital advertising was worth more than 5 trillion won for the first time. That's about 4.2 billion U.S. dollars. A report Wednesday by the advertising agency Chae Worldwide said digital advertising accounted for about 42 percent of the advertising market as a whole. Of that, mobile advertising grew to more than 3.2 trillion won, or about 2.7 billion dollars, up 17 percent. As for broadcast advertising, it declined for a third year in a row to make up 30 percent of the market. A new Greenpeace report suggests that millions of early deaths around the world have been caused by air pollution from burning fossil fuels. And that's cost the global economy nearly three trillion U.S. dollars. Kim Hyo Sun tells us more. The study shows air pollution causes 40,000 premature deaths in South Korea alone every year. A report published by Greenpeace Southeast Asia and the Center for Research on Energy and Clean Air estimates that around 4.5 million people died prematurely each year as of 2018 due to air pollution caused by the burning of fossil fuels. By country, China topped the list with 1.8 million annual premature deaths, followed by India with 1 million and the U.S. with 230,000. The annual premature death toll within the European Union stood at 380,000. The NGO also argues that air pollution can incur an annual global economic cost of 2.9 trillion U.S. dollars. The figure is equivalent to 3.3 percent of the global GDP. China, the U.S. and India are the hardest hit financially by the impact of polluted air, with estimated costs of 900, 600 and 150 billion dollars each year respectively. 
The report also stressed that dirty air is a great threat to children, especially those in low-income countries, pointing to an estimate that 40,000 children die each year before they reach their fifth birthday due to air pollution. It highlights that shifting to a clean energy and transport system would have economic as well as health benefits. Kim Yo-san, Arirang News. And that brings us to the end of this newscast. Thank you for watching. More live news coming your way at 7 p.m. Korea time.